So, Timothy, the story gets stranger and stranger. The Honolulu Star advertiser has some new details about that December 6th phone call between Teo and his uh, alleged girlfriend who'd been dead for months, apparently. What did they find out? Well, Anderson, and it's good to be back with you. It's important that we remember that all of the egregious falsehoods that found their way to newspapers and uh, to broadcast television about the relationship between Manti Teo and Lene Kakua came from either the Teo family or from Manti himself. So when we hear another outrageous story about drug dealers, faking deaths, etc., that comes from a member of the Teo family, you have to take it with the appropriate amount of skepticism. And, and, you know, in addition, you know, as we just saw in that report, we have some individuals who claim to be uncles or cousins or otherwise relatives of either Tui Asisopo or Teo. In our investigation at Deadspin.com, we found several people who claimed to be related somehow to these people, and it turns out that they couldn't establish any of those family contacts. So as for this story, I'm, I'm sort of withholding any judgment until we can find some other, you know, reflection, evidence, somebody saying something about it online, anything like that that would lend it any sort of validity. And this guy, Tui Sosopo, I, I keep asking up his name, Tui Asosopo. Tui Asosopo. He is not talking. Nobody's been able to talk to him yet, right? No, I mean, we've had his number since the weekend. He's, he's not answering our calls. He is not answering our texts. And it's maybe in his best interest, uh, you know, to finally step up and talk to somebody because he's coming out as the bad guy in all this. And it's very possible that he is the bad guy. Uh, you know, he just kind of wants some answers. We know that he's been doing this sort of Lene Kikua pretending to be a woman online for a very long time. And we know that Manti Teo is in no way the first victim of that scheme. What we don't know is what any kind of possible benefit that uh, Ronaya Tui Asasopo could have for engaging in this kind of charade. Right. Tony, you've been following college football for many years. Have you ever encountered a story, anything like this, where details about a player's life turn out to be totally false? No, Anderson, there's never been another story like this. I mean, there's a lot of bizarre things that happen in college football. Of course, we're about a year removed away from the, the Jerry Sandusky story at Penn State, which was something that we had never uh, had to deal with. But for to have this kind of narrative about this kind of player to get to the national championship game, to be a finalist for the Heisman Trophy, for all that to happen, and then for it to all unravel in a matter of few days when Deadspin broke the story, uh, there's never been anything like this. How do you think, Tony, I mean, was, was Notre Dame, did it surprise you that they took so long to, I mean, they didn't say anything until Deadspin broke the story. They, they had known for quite some time, they said they launched an investigation, but they remained silent. Does that surprise you? Well, it surprised me a little bit, but I, I shouldn't be surprised by now because I understand a lot of what college athletics is about now is about protecting the brand, okay? That, you know, these stories, this is not an analogous uh, story with Penn State, but Penn State found itself in the same position to protect the brand against a difficult story. If the timeline that, that I read that, uh, that Jack and Timothy put together is that they found out about it on December 26th, Notre Dame did their investigation, and they got the results on January 4th. That's three days from the national championship game. Even as a reporter, I wish they had come clean then, but they're not going to do that three days before playing for the national championship. They're not going to do it. Timothy, there's an ESPN report that Tuyo Sosopo confessed the hoax to a female friend back in December and said Teo wasn't involved at all. Is that a story you buy? Have you been able to knock it down? What do you make of that? Oh, well, we've talked to two people who were familiar with that confession in our initial investigation. And we've also spoken with at least one of the other people that Shelley Smith spoke with uh, in her report today. Indeed, one of the individuals she spoke with in her, in her Outside the Lines report on ESPN today uh, indicated to us that uh, they were very skeptical that Manti Teo was a 100% victim. And the person that we spoke with who initially told us about the confession also indicated to us that they suspected that Manti Teo had a part of this. Interesting. Uh, Tim Berg, I uh, appreciate you being on again. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, uh, you're the one who broke the story. Tony Barnhart, I appreciate you being with us. Thanks.